Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures. Today we're going to talk about the plight of the kobold, the poor kobold, who is so often mistreated, mistrusted, and oftentimes completely ignored for his much bigger, cooler, and awesomer brethren that are part of the Children of the Flame from the Dragon Trapper's Lodge. So I've shown these guys before the fact that they've got a whole army of kind of I don't know if steampunk is the right word, more like diesel punk, dragonborn, military themed units is something that I absolutely can get behind. And the kobolds, while having their own unit, were just kind of languishing off to the side, you know, while their big dragonborn brethren have like, you know, cool heroic medics wading into battle. They've got, you know, hardened close combat specialists they've got the seriously armored veterans which still don't have any you know submachine guns like their cobalt brethren i guess that is one point that we can give to the cobalt i mean this machine gun submachine gun whatever you want to call it, a rifle he's got in his hands kind of look like an old thompson one right uh at least that's what it reminds me of i would absolutely love to get some of the dragonborn in like gray coats armor carrying those things around all commando style would be kind of cool but no the kobolds have their moment today even though they were even able to get you know mounted versions if you want kobold cavalry well today we're going to take it to the next level the kobolds have leveled up they have entered into the diesel punk age and we now bring you the kobold tinker hulk suit now i'm going to call this the mark one suit of which there are actually a few variations just on the body. I like this one with the big rockets attached. This is all one single piece, and you can see I missed a little bit here and there. But overall, pretty solid, pretty impressive. You can see here, this is where the pilot is going to be plugging in. Uh, they are conveniently magnetized, or I should say, have spots to conveniently magnetize them. So if you want to go that route, you absolutely can. Why would you want to magnetize these arms, though? Well, that's a good question because they come with a substantial amount of weaponry. Flamethrowers, big smashy hammers if you want engineering units, upside down <laughs> fists for the wrong hands. So if you want to paint them up in, you know, super robot colors, like I, I, I look at this, I see these big old jet thrusters and I'm thinking Kikayo, Techromancer, Mazinga Z type setup. Chainsaws, there's swords, there's flame cannonball launcher things. Uh, there's all kinds of cool little options available for both arms. And like I said, there's a few different body types. Uh, we have this one, we have a more basic one, we have a spiky kind of Bowser, King Koopa-ish version. And then the bases, you can see, they actually do have a special base. Now what's kind of neat is, you can see there's these little slots right here. That's where his claws actually there are parts on the bottom of the claws that are going to plug in so he conveniently slots into that base and then you know you can't really see where he's actually connected and there's four connection points so that's kind of nice and it's pretty pretty flat there on the bottom of the feet too so shouldn't have any issues keeping it stable it's about a 40 millimeter base no that doesn't look 40 that's a 50. i'm like I don't know my base sizes, do I? Okay, I'm just going to borrow this GW guy. You're on a 40, that's bigger for sure. Okay. Anyways, so we've got a full suit. We've got a full complement of weaponry for it. Um, I actually have an extra one here that I started to just blue tack together here. So just to give you an idea of how big they are, you can see here, this is a different variation on the body. You know, the legs, the torso, it's basically going to be the back that you're going to see the most significant difference on. And the one downside to these, the one real major criticism, and that's me just being picky, I feel like, is I would love some kind of enclosed canopy. Not because, uh, well, partly because I like having just that closed off mech suit. Uh, I know then you don't get the focal point of the kobold but just I, I keep thinking like some kind of world war ii nose cone with like 
face painted on it, I think would be absolutely appropriate for these things. Uh, I, I just, I, it's a cool concept. And the fact that, you know, considering everything else that this army has for availability now, we've got cavalry, we've got flying dragon aerial units, we've got the parachuting kobolds. We do have a command unit now, actually, for the basic troops, which is kind of cool. Um, you know, we have all that for the larger Dragonborn as well. There's all kinds of Dragonborn specialty units. We've got, like, the hero models. We've got, like, the mages and the gas mask trench warfare type stuff. We've got all the heavy weapon teams running around. We got a lot of stuff. I don't even have, never mind, like, the big siege wyverns, which I will be showing off one of these days. I have one in the midst of paint, painting well, we'll get there first. Let's finish printing it before we start talking about painting it. But yeah. Um, and one of the other things I really wanted to mention about these kits, and I am going to call it a kit even if it's a 3D printed one, um, is the fact that they have rules available through one page rules uh, through their community rule book for both fantasy and sci-fi versions. So you want to have these guys pulling double duty? I mean, that's pretty freaking awesome, I think. You know, they're not going to be uh, letting the Marines step up to them much either there. So that's kind of nice to see. Again, nice variety of weapons. I mean, I, I guess if I really wanted to just go wish listing, you know, maybe some more sci-fi equivalent weapons would be kind of cool to see. Uh, I really just would like to see some kind of a cool cockpit, helmet, enclosed dome for this suit. Because, I mean, if we've got like, you know poison mages throwing gas and toxic fumes around. I feel like even with the fumes coming off this one, it, it seems like that they would want to do something to protect themselves. In fact, I don't think we've seen any real gas masked units for this series of models. And you know, it's not like you even have to stray very far. We've got the fiends of Encandriox, which are like the evil twisted versions of these, which there are twisted kobolds as well. Oh, so if you wanted to have rival lizard units, of which, you know, of course I do. I'm going to be in seventh heaven painting, playing and painting with all this stuff. Um, if you haven't had a chance, I mean, by all means, you really should check this stuff out while it's available. And with the holidays uh, season, always there's going to be those sales. Uh, regular Patreons always get the sale prices, too. So if you're interested, if you've got access to a printer or if you don't even have a printer there's plenty of services out there that you can get this through i know through their only games on my mini factory um, but there's just a lot of fun stuff to be had so i'm going to stop rambling i'm going to go check if that printer is finished because i really do want to show off that siege wyvern and hopefully have everything fit on camera but yeah uh, i will studiously keep painting away at these guys and hopefully showing them off on instagram if you guys want to check them out and hopefully you'll have as much fun with them as i do so with that said then this has been high lord tamberlane with obscurities and miniatures saying thanks for watching and we will see you back here soon Bye-bye.